Hi, this is David Starr. Welcome to the Beauty and Ruin podcast. My guests on this episode are Doug and Talisha Williams. Make their home in East Nashville, but travel the world as wild ponies making great music. They made a great contribution to this project as well. Good morning. We're on the phone with Doug and Talisha Williams from East Nashville. I assume you're in East Nashville. We're we in East Nashville. Sure are. I've there. been there. And and I'm trying to remember, your dog's name is Hazel? Hazel Dickens. Hazel. Sure. Okay, good. Because uh, we, we, when I talked to Dana Cooper the other day, we included his dog, uh, Pee Wee, and his cat, Buddha. Uh-huh. And, of course, Irene Kelly has um, has her dog. And uh, Oh, yeah. What is... Um... Her dog's named after, is it Lester? Penny. Penny. Yeah. Her dog's okay. named Penny. Okay. Penny Ann, I well, there's think. there's a good chance Hazel will be a part of the, of the interview <laughs> any, any minute now. Yeah, so it's so it's uh, it's important that, that if the dog runs in with a tennis ball or, you know, something, that people know what's going on. So yeah. um, to, to I'll get people up to date who may not know. We met through our mutual friend uh, who's a publicist, author, editor, and all-around good guy, Craig Shelburne, who's... Now we're over at the Bluegrass situation and doing great work over there. How do you guys know Craig? We met Craig right when we first moved to town, did he? We met him through, I think, running, maybe. Yeah, Ellen, I, I, Ellen I, was training, I was training for a marathon at the time, and Ellen's family introduced us as people who should know each other for running. We just started hanging out once a We tried to get together twice a month, I think, with the first day, and kind of go out and have drinks and hang out. Got to be good bud. Good. He's been a real help on this project and yeah. pulling this whole thing together and giving me inspiration and ideas. So, um, all right. So collectively, uh, you're known as Wild Ponies. So d- d- for those of who don't, who, those of out there who may not know about Wild Ponies, let's give me a, give me a little, give me the quick down and dirty about that uh, project. Yes, yeah, that's, that's, we just uh, we're a band, you know, and, and we travel all over the world. We hit all fifty states and all over Europe and Canada and. Um, I put out a record every now and then, uh, and that's pretty much just how we make our living. Well, and you do a podcast. We do. We have a radio show on WSM uh, Route 650, and we are launching a, a, a new podcast as well called The Long Ride. Right. Cool. Yeah. Well, you just I think you just celebrated your 100th show on the Whiskey We did. Wednesday. Yeah, that's cool. 100 shows. That's, yeah. that's not a small thing. I mean, that's it's a lot of work to put this kind of thing together and um all right yeah. so when i came to you all with this project which was the the book of what was nothing is left you know craig kind of put us together on that on that the idea of writing a song from this book for this project that that uh that john oates is produced and the idea was just to get people up to speed i would give this book to some songwriters and then they would come back with ideas for a song or in your case you guys came back with a song and it called Barry the Young, and it was try as I might to insert myself in there. It didn't need anything once you guys had finished it. So really, really good song. And um, awesome. tell me, kind of tell me about how you, you came to that song, because it's um, it, it sort of starts out, you know, back when in the Garden of Eden and ends up kind of on the yeah. front page of the New York Times. So um, how, how, did you, how did you write that song? Well, we read the book, um, you know, uh, he asked, asked us to read the book and, and kind of look for things that would strike us and, and have us want to, want to have to find something to write a song about. So we read it, and um, it just happened the time that we read it was a, a, a really interesting time in American history. And we read it not long after the Parkland shootings down in Florida. And one of the, I don't want to get spoiler alerts for the, for the book, um, but one, one of the things that happens in the book, just I guess in the easiest without a spoiler, is that a son dies a tragic death. Yeah. And the death is just uh, too much for his mother to bear. And uh, literally too much for, for, her to, for her to bear. Yep. And it got us thinking about those, those things and those things and how, how just, terrible and horrible it would be for a mother or a father or a sister or a brother to have to bury a young one uh, after such, after a violent tragic death and with everything that was happening in parkland we took some of the some of the inspiration from emma gonzalez who was one of the students survivors of that attack and she's kind of become an activist and outspoken we took some of her ideas and thoughts 
and um, some words from my, my college uh, poetry professor, Nikki Giovanni, who's one of the most amazing poets in the 20th century, and I guess 21st century now, she's still around. Um, she wrote an amazing poem after Tupac Shakur passed away, and she mentioned how it's not the right order of things for the, for the mother to have to bury her child. Right. She, too, asked why. Tupac has a mother. The lovely Athene has to bury her son. It is not right. It is not right that this young warrior is cut down. It is not right for the old to bury the young. It is not right. And we took, we took those ideas, and we, we, we kind of mingled them in with, um, there were some other, the book really used biblical quotes in a pretty interesting way in a, in a lot of different places. And so we took some of those biblical quotes um, and, and kind of shifted those around and added a little bit more to them and, and make the first verse, and we just kind of walked it out from there. Right, because the second, the second verse sort of speaks to, um, I guess, the, 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 you know, honoring our, our, those who come home, you know, from military service uh, and have, it does, yeah. you know, and the folded yeah. flag and folded flag on the mantle and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it's just sort of, you know, it's, I feel like even though it is not the right order of things for sure, it is a thing that has been happening through all time that we, that. Since Adam and Eve. Since Adam and Eve. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, the very first parents step have had to bury their children, and it's a it's a very tragic experience. Um, well, and so it, in the book, that was the, the our our dark little heart really well <laughs> really grabbed hold of that part. <laughs> it's you know it's interesting because my grandfather was a he didn't strike me as a morose guy, but he had seen a lot in his life, and yeah. and uh, you know there. One of my biggest regrets is that he's not here for me to say, okay, this this area here in the book, did this happen to you? Did you did you witness this in your life? Is this something real or is this something, you know, from your imagination as an author? And I asked my older brother one day about that, and he said, I think all of it happened on some level. You know, it's like as songwriters, we, we see things or, or we read things in the paper or whatever, and uh, and we, we apply those to our work or to our craft. And... Uh, so some some days I, I I wish he were here to ask, but I think the the lesson I see in that song and and really in that book is that pe we haven't learned much, you know, as people. <laughs> and right. We, we keep right. we keep bumping our heads, you know, against the wall and making the same yeah. mistakes again. So, um, and the, you know, and the, and the idea that grief grief is sort of a timeless thing. Um, it is. I don't know if you heard the song that Irene Kelly and I wrote, but it's it's. Uh, it speaks to that that whole idea of the grief, where not once but twice in that book, um, uh, mothers have to bury their children, and and the grief is just too much for them. You know, they can't yeah they can't cope. The so uh, um, I don't know what what else struck you about the book. Um, what were you just your general I don't know sort of impressions of the book and the writing and the the well, style. Well, fun to read. Fun is the wrong word. It, it's interesting to read it. You know, it's a time capsule, as I think a lot of um, novels can be. But it's interesting to look back and think about. Um, hey, but it's interesting to look back at at the at um, the way your grandfather approached. Uh, so it's almost a double layered time capsule because it's going back to, to his generation, his writing. Right. He was writing about it an even earlier time. So it's interesting to look at how. You know, he viewed that particular time in American history. I guess I guess the book is set somewhere. Uh, I don't remember the years exactly. It was set, but it's r roughly Reconstruction era, I think, right? Well, it, yeah, it's or, sort of it's sort of uh, it begins to take place in the late eighteen hundreds. And if you'll remember, yeah. the captain who's one of the main guys, he was in the Spanish American War and rode with right, right. Roosevelt and all that. So, so it's it's at a pivotal. It takes place at a pivotal time when. There's probably a lot of structural change going on in the country where you have the the advent of the Model T and all that in yeah. the later part of the story. So, just yeah, that was kind of fascinating. Too. You know, we're there. We're just always we're just always um, there's just always this grind going on of, in civilization about there's there's change going on both with people and with with the the scenery and the landscape and the stuff around us you know i mean we didn't have we didn't have cell phones 30 years ago and now look at us we're talking on one over a 
you know. Okay. We're building a podcast over a cell phone. It's weird. Um, Different time zone. Yeah. It is. So, you know, uh, one of the things that when we talked about this song, when you guys brought it to the project, was I was a little confused about whether the Parkland shooting uh, thing happened as you were writing, before you wrote it, or after you'd started it. And I couldn't remember how the, the sequence of events there, but... Um, I think the, I think it was before. I okay. think it was at, probably as we were. I'm, think, I'm thinking back at, about the timeline now. Right. It had to have been. Hazel is really excited about this dog. <laughs> <laughs> I hate um, it. It had to have been really right about the time of the of the parking shooting, I guess, and you know, it, or maybe shortly thereafter. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, I remember you bringing that up because it. It took, you know, and that's been an interesting thing about this project is some of the songs pretty much, you know, the stuff I wrote, I reached in the book and pulled stuff out and wrote a song as yeah. if it were mine, which it, which has been liberating for me because a lot of times I'm, I'm too much in my own head. And so it was a good exercise as a writer to get out of that, um, out of that place. Absolutely. I need, right. out, I need out of my head the, as much as I can get out of my head. Um, but some songs... Well, this kind of project is... Yeah, go ahead. Well, some songs have sort of taken that approach and other other things in in the case of the song you all wrote, much more timely sort of current stuff found its way into the into the song. So I like that we didn't and none of us I think were constricted by that and but you all took it and made it very very topical and and uh, uh tell me you, you you said early on when you started playing that song for people on gigs whether it was a duo or live or, or a full band or whatever, you said you you were getting you were getting some pretty um, immediate response yeah. to that from audiences. We still do. It's, it, when we play that one, when we get to that uh, the um, sort of the breakdown section, right? And um, you know, kind of make a make a, a declaration that uh, is, I guess, the climax of the song. And you know we would have people just jump up to their feet and, and applaud right right away. I think I think people were, and at the end of the song, it's kind of the, kind of the same thing. Right. Um, I think people are, you know, not 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 to get political, because I think we I think at this point we've very nearly transcended the political. I think this is almost not just a left and a right issue anymore. It shouldn't be, and it uh, it seems to me it's way beyond that. And one thing I'll just say before I forget I it, it is. is is the the line about th thoughts and prayers uh, yeah. being empty tokens. Yeah. I've actually begun to hear that in the, you know, in the big, in the big old world now. So you guys were kind sure. of ahead. You were sort of ahead of everybody on that in a way um, you were speaking truth before people would speak truth. So I, I think that's cool. And that's what songs ought to do. Yeah. Um, so um, Talisha, you, you sang on my version of this on the record and, uh, right. You I did. can't. I loved it. Well, I can't tell you how many times I've been sitting. I can think of three, actually, three completely separate times sitting with John Oates, who produced this thing, and he just shakes his head and goes, "God, she sounds good on this," you know. <laughs> and Aww, it's nice. it's you brought a you you brought an emotional component to it that was clearly your own, and it really it really elevated the song. So I'm grateful for that. And this this project has been just the spirit of collaboration and it, to me being someone who doesn't live in Nashville full time I have a place there and I'm there as much as I can be but to me this is what that town ought to be which is you got a guy like Craig who introduces me to people like yeah. you and a guy like John who could do anything he wants but likes the idea so he gets involved and Dana and Wood Newton and you know and, and Irene and um, and then Shelly, who works for me out here in Colorado, all these people come together, and then we can assemble this great band and these singers. And I mean, it's just to me, that's that's the spirit of it, you know. And if I could just do that every year, I would, but I would never have yeah, any, no any money. So, yeah. so yeah. it's it's a it's yeah. an amazing project, and I'm real proud of it. Go ahead. Well, yeah, we're, we love working with you, and we obviously love working with John. John, what a what a sweet guy. I mean, he's a legit rock star. And just, but just a really sweet human being, and a fun guy to work with. Well, he's and, he's been he's been as generous with his time and energy as anybody I can imagine. And yeah, I you know there are days I go, well, what? Why is he doing this? And I asked him that one day. He said, 
because it's a cool project and you sing good? And I went, okay. So I'll just, yeah. I'll shut uh, up. I'll yeah. just shut up now and go with that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you all on this project. I hope we can work together in the in the future. Yeah, man, and, of course. Uh, Thank you for including um, us on. Where I'm, Where are you back. playing? You You back on tour soon? What are you doing? Oh, we're constantly on the road. Yeah, we're at, <laughs> we're at, we're in Nashville through Americana Fest, right? Um, and then we head we head back out the week after Americana Fest on a tour through the Midwest, Northeast, and Southeast um, with a full band. Now okay. that's going to be a lot. Yeah. Well, when are you coming back to Colorado again? Because I've got a spot we for you. We need to. Okay. Yes, Let's do it. I'm, I'm You'll ready. have us. We, I know. Have, we love Colorado. Well, every, not, um, everybody loved you at the new, the, new, the new venue we've got here, so everybody it's really so enjoyed cool. that. It was very cool. Was great room. We'll be there anytime we can get there for sure. How's that amp working? It's great. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. It's fantastic. I, it, it's just, it sounds great. I, yep. I bought it. David, we had our stuff broken into in Seattle. And as we we're on the way to, to play David's show in Cedar Edge, and so I had to borrow an amp. And the amp I borrowed was, a, I guess, a mid to late 70s Princeton reverb that I just couldn't leave Colorado without. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, really amazing I, deal. I'm trying to build my arsenal of gear that I keep at my place in Nashville. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a, some full band shows starting at Americana Fest. I've got a showcase at the basement and, and, uh, and then another showcase late in uh, – Late in October, which I might want you guys to come be a part of, but we'll talk about that off the air. Sure. But, yeah. but I, I was thinking the other day, man, I wish I had a nice electric guitar amp down in Nashville. And I thought, <laughs> I know the one I wish I had, but, <laughs> but I don't. So, uh, and I've had, I just had another surgery, so I can't lift anything anyway. I have to have some little solid state something, but it'll, it'll get me through. So, thanks, Doug and yeah. Talisha. And wildponies.com, uh, is that where people can find Wildponies. you? Wildponies.net. Wildponies.net. Yeah. Cool. All right. We'll uh, we're gonna listen to the song now, and then we'll uh, see you guys out on the road. Thanks. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Eve's tears fell on Abel. King David wept for Absalom. Mother Mary was forsaken. And it laid her precious boy behind the stone Mothers shouldn't grieve their babies Fathers shouldn't mourn their sons Lay their hope beneath the daisies It's not right for the old to bury the young It's not right Stone markers shining in the sun. Seventeen birthday candles. I ain't never gonna burn for anyone. Mothers shouldn't grieve their babies. Fathers shouldn't mourn their sons. We're gonna fix what you left broken We're gonna do what you left undone Thoughts and prayers are empty tokens We are your daughters and your sons Mothers shouldn't grieve their babies Fathers shouldn't mourn their Lay their hope beneath the daisies It's not right for the old to bury the young It's 
not right for the old to bury the young. It's not.